Good morning. Uh, just going to talk a little bit about pruning blueberries for production. Um, I know my slide says blue, uh, blueberries, blackberries, and muscadines, um, but I've hidden some slides and we'll, we'll work through that. Uh, so remember the three T's of pruning. It's going to be tools, timing, and technique. Um, this is going to be very important um, from start to finish on your plants, whether they're, you know, two days old or two months old to, you know, 20 years and you just bought a house or you just bought a place that has, uh, that had blueberries in the past and nothing's been done to them. So, um, so why do we prune the blueberries? One, we want to develop a good plant structure. Um, this is going to help you in production. Uh, we're going to control that plant size because we don't want to pick anything off of the ladder, um, especially um, if you're not, if you're homeowner, small, you pick, you don't want to, you don't want all your production to be eight foot, nine foot off the ground. We're going to control that fruit number and size by, uh, by pruning. It'll aid in harvesting and uh, disease and insect control because we need to open that canopy. We need to uh, let air movement through it. Um, and we need to be able to, if we have to apply um, any pesticides or anything, then we can, uh, we can get good coverage. So pruning blueberries, um, we'd like to thank uh, Tony Glover. Um, this is some of his slides that I've, I've used and Chip East has sent me some pictures. So just going ahead and getting that, that out there. Um, we're gonna, a little pruning is required for the first few years. And then we wanna remove those low hanging branches, dead diseased wood, um, usually at any time on diseased or broken wood. Uh, we don't want those routes for uh, for disease entry to just go through the year. Um, keep these to a mature height of around six feet or less. Um, mainly, we want to make it uh, make it easy for yourself or your clientele if you're a U pick. Um, shorter plants are easier to harvest. You know, kind of makes sense. You know, we use that that superpower of common sense here. Um, and uh, and then new vigorous shoots produce larger fruit. So if you look out at your blueberry plants now and you've got a pink kind of hue to those rows, to those plants and everything, you've got some good young wood that's gonna bear uh, some nice fruit this year. Tools, you know, there's always the right tool uh, for everything. Um, we go from the silky saws to your Felco pruners um, and you can use any, Corona's a good brand, Felco, uh, A.M. Leonard. Um, we don't get any kickbacks from any of these companies. Um, we just use quality products and uh, that hold up. A lot of these you can buy replacement blades for. Um, just know that if I'm going with a hand pruner, that's anything that's going to be three quarters of an inch or less. Um, if I'm, then I need to move up to a lopper. If I'm going to go, you know, two inches in diameter to that, to that three quarter. And then anything over two inches, um, you're going to have to go more to a saw, whether it be a folding saw or a fixed blade saw. Uh, if you do uh, pull out the saw there, um, just know that these are back cut saws. They only cut when you pull back on them. So don't try to push in. I've had uh, cases where clients have said, well, you know, the battery operated cutoff saws. Um, that's what I use. And it's okay, but I don't know if my video got cut off. Um, but once we stop this, I'll show you what those battery operated saws can do to a plant at times and um, how I discourage folks from using those. So timing depends on the purpose. Um, if we are trying to make it, um, if we're doing a renewal, then we're gonna best time to prune uh, rabbit eye blueberries is gonna be winter, which is now. Uh, February, uh, maybe first of March. Um, we don't wanna do it too late. And I've got a slide later on. Height control, some summer pruning. Um, we're gonna do this right after harvest. So some post-harvest pruning can be done to reduce some height. It can delay blooming um, if, you, uh, if you do this too late. Um, so. 
this is something that I wouldn't just go out if you had 100 plants and go out and do every one of them the first year. I'm going to do post-harvest pruning this year, and I don't care what they say. Pick you a few plants, go out there, make you some post-harvest prune, pruning cuts, and, um, and see how your plant reacts. So you kind of know that that plant and the way it's going to react to your to your uh, post harvest pruning. So kind of a when to prune summary is at planting we're going to do very little pruning. During establishment, this is the two to three years, very little. You know, maybe some lower branches, maybe some weak uh, shoots that are that are coming up. Um, you know, if there's damage. You know, we get wildlife damage. Um, if you're trying to keep cleaned around them and everything, then you're, you may get some mechanical damage from equipment or, or stuff. And then sometimes they just, you know, we, we have, have other issues. Um, after your harvest, this is July to August, um, is when we want to do that post-harvest pruning. And then those renewal cuts, that's late February to early March. And then sprout removal, that's, that's any time. If you're trying to keep that, that form of that plant and not going to let it grow in a hedgerow, um, you're going to try to establish individual plants to where they have space in between them. Um, this sprout removal can happen at any time. We're just going to cut those off at the ground. Uh, but, you know, when we're making renewal cuts, sometimes letting some of these sprouts replace some of those can be can be helpful. Um, remove damaged or dead branches anytime. And I can't stress that enough. Uh, we see that a lot, um, especially in our area with wildlife damage. You know, you're gonna get deer in there and they're gonna decide they want to rub their antlers on your blueberry plants or they're running through there because, you know, they're chasing each other around and everything and they're breaking limbs and everything. Go ahead and prune those off if you see them. Um, because we don't want those routes for disease entry. Winter re renewal pruning, done late before this plant blooms, done on mature plants that's four to five years old. And we're going to remove about 20, 25% of the oldest canes at the base of the plants. And I have a, I have a picture coming up that Chip has sent me. Um, so here's a picture for uh, no pruning for about 17 years or so. Um, you can see this is just a hedgerow. And this is what we deal with a lot of times where blueberries are a lot of work if you want good production. And they just let them go. I can, you can see there's, uh, find my cursor here. We'll find right there. There's been some cuts made um, that's probably three or four years old right there. Um, if you can see my pointer, but it's a, um, you'll get small berries. Your production is going to be out of reach. It's going to be up high. Um, you get a lot of interior shading. You get increased pest problems and high water needs because if you're running your drip irrigation, you're going you're gonna to have to put more water. There's more plant there um, to support. And so it's going to just increase those needs. So we talked a lot about renewal cuts, and this is one of the things that, um, that a lot of blueberry growers um, I guess it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to do, um, because they see that good, thick stem, that healthy plant. And, um, and it's got some lichens on it, which is not going to hurt anything. That's just natural. They're filters, but, um, they don't want to cut those. I don't want to cut that big stem. I don't want to cut that big stalk. And, um, but we have to, all right, we have to, they're not meant to be trees. So uh, you can see where this has taken, it looks about 50% of that where they've taken and done a renewal cut probably a couple of seasons ago um, on the right-hand side of this picture. And you can see where that new growth, that adventitious budding has, uh, has pushed out and created um, new shoots and everything that will give better production. Now, some of those need thinned out. And, um, and then the next season, they're gonna renew, make some renewal cuts on that left-hand side. And we can do some height tricks here. Um, and then we want every year, we wanna remove some of that oldest canes. If they form bark, 
and have lichens on them, they're they're probably needing renewal cuts happen to them. We're gonna go six to eight, 18 inches above the soil level to make these cuts. Um, just a, a few good references here. Um, we have the ACES pruning and training small fruits. Um, it is there. We have our YouTube fresh from the field uh, videos. Um, we have our publications where uh, training and pruning fruit trees. Also, um, Texas A&M has a pruning brochure that's very uh, informative on that. It's, it's a good put together uh, publication there. And just some final thoughts from me and I'll get to some questions. Remember pruning is just as much art farm, art farm as it is a science. Um, bad pruning is worse than no pruning. Uh, pruning is only a temporary solution for a permanent problem. And don't ever top a tree. And crepe murder should be criminal offense with jail time. Uh, don't be scared. And for the most part, you won't kill it.